But I just thought she was so stunning was Kaleidoscope. You mean Kaleidoscope? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Kaleidoscope? Kaleidoscope. (laughs) (laughs) I loved Kaleidoscope. (laughs) Is that what you called it as a child? (laughs) I never had one. I don't know. You ruined my honorable mention. Welcome to the Art of Costume Blogcast. My name is Elizabeth Joy Glass. And I'm Spencer Williams. How are you doing today, Spencer? (laughs) I'm doing good. Last night I did the most LA thing I think I've ever done in my life, which is sitting in Hollywood Forever Cemetery dressed up as a Death Eater and watching Harry Potter and a Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> you dressed up as a Death Eater? <laughs> well, you know, I was I had my little dark mark tattoo. <laughs> I was wearing my Beltrix the Strange <laughs> shirt. You know, had some white wine and a little cheese plate. So, you know. That cheese spread did look good. Yeah, it was good. I'm, you know, paying for it now, of course, as I think the listeners are going to hear the hangover in my voice, but... I'm going to do it today. I'm excited. (laughs) I believe in you. I believe in you. Well, today we are watching The Suicide Squad 2021. Spencer, how perfect was this movie? This movie was beyond perfect. It surpassed all of my wildest dreams. I was severely disappointed by the one that came out a couple years ago. So when I heard that James Gunn was going to be doing this new adaptation, I knew it was going to be perfect, and it exceeded all expectations. It was so good. It really did. There's also like just so many twists and turns. I was like, hold on, what are we watching? <laughs> it's so crazy. I love the way that they you know, marketed this film because they make it sound like, oh my gosh, there's all these going to be these amazing superheroes and it's going to be so fun and all these characters and, you know, 10 minutes into the movie, you realize it's not at all what you thought it was going to be. It's not. And you know what? Let's just jump into it with a summary, Spencer. You ready? All right. Suicide Squad 2021. The U.S. government sends the most dangerous, ridiculous supervillains in the world to the remote, enemy-infused island of Corto Maltese. Those that survived the initial arrival then must travel through hostile territory to destroy evidence of the giant alien starfish known as Starro the Conqueror. And that's all I wrote. I mean, because I don't really know how else to summarize this movie, except lots of fighting, lots of blood, there's a shark, and a giant alien starfish. Yeah, that's that pretty much does it. Um... Consider this your spoiler warning, because there's no way to talk about this <laughs> without spoiling it. It's just, it's not possible. Yeah. Dare I say it's already too late. I think we just spoiled the entire movie for you. You totally just spoiled the starfish surprise. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. It sucks to suck. You guys should be watching the movies. We give you a week ahead of time. <laughs> uh, we do. We give you plenty of, of forewarning. You you saw the title of this episode. You knew what we were going to talk about, so... Yeah, yeah, you know what you're getting yourself into. So with that, I think I'm going to go behind the wardrobe. The Suicide Squad was directed by James Gunn, and costume design is by Judiana Mugoski. You're going to know her from just one of a million things. Big Six Degrees of Separation, Practical Magic. Oh, I love that one. Personal <laughs> Favorite. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Okay. Like, come on. Everybody's seen that. Another thing everybody has seen, National Treasure. I love that movie. Guilty pleasure. The little, like, (laughs) wannabe archaeologist in me loved that movie. (laughs) I also loved, as a child, X-Men The Last Stand. Ooh. The Hunger Games. Captain America, Winter Soldier. Captain America, Civil War, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, mm-hmm. Avengers Infinity War, Endgame. Right now, she's working on Guardians 3. Oh. This woman's incredible. Yeah, I mean, she literally is a superhero. Judiana is a superhero. I remember the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 costumes, and I immediately was, you know, in love. She is, like, 
so incredible. She pretty much set up what the Wizarding World was going to look like. That's crazy. She designed those original uniforms. She designed the original look for everybody. So it's like, oh my gosh, how brilliant is she? Very brilliant. (laughs) She is so brilliant. And she did a brilliant job on this. And clearly this is not her first time working with James Gunn. And she says working with him is kind of a dream process. Uh, Unfortunately, she's only done one interview about this so far with um, Women's Wear Daily. She said working with him is a dream job. And they spent six to eight weeks, her, the concept illustrator, and James Gunn, just figuring it all out. And she's like, it's such a collaborative atmosphere. She loved it. So it's like they really all worked on this. You know, Suicide Squad really is like the dream project. It's so exciting. Can you imagine just being tasked these like 100 million different superheroes and you're coming up with the modern day costuming for each of these comic book heroes? That sounds so exciting to me. I know. I'm like, that's I can't imagine. Well, Elizabeth, I am just so excited to talk about this movie. So I think we should take a little break. And then we have a lot of superhero costumes to break down. So we need to get our our energy up. Yeah, we do. (laughs) Let's go crush some iced coffee and we're going to be ready on the other side. (laughs) Sounds good. Are you ready to get into this? I was born ready. Let's do this. We were born ready. Today, we're kind of just going to go through each character. Not really the scenes, because there's not a ton of costume changes. Um, But we're going to break down each of these looks. First up, we have team number one. (laughs) Team number one, which I will say that team number one was actually the team I feel like I was more excited for, which didn't really work out for me in the end, so... And I love this because they all look so different. And James Gunn told her that he didn't need them all to look like they came from the same movie. He wanted them to look like they came from their own movies and just like ended up together here. So she was really allowed to like be free in how they were designed without the worry of like, oh, do they do they match? Do they not match? Are they staying true to the character? So she really had that freedom to just make them look however she wanted them to look. And she does a great job. Like Michael Rooker, he seems like so menacing at first. And then it's just like, is the biggest coward. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree with you. It does look like every single person came from their own movie, which I think was the fun of it. I was just so excited to see all the different costumes, all the different characters. That's what the most fun about suicide squad is to me which i felt like was you know kind of lacking with the first movie because in the second movie we really got to just kind of brief little but strong windows into each of these characters which was a lot of fun we started with savant played by michael rooker which i was so excited for to see savant and uh, wow (laughs) what a letdown (laughs) it's so funny the first 10 minutes is such a like like oh you thought you knew what this movie was gonna be about No, you don't. (laughs) It's so funny seeing Michael Rooker play a scared character because I'm so used to like, you know, we both know I'm a huge Walking Dead fan where he plays Merle and he's such like this badass with like the medieval weapon on his arm. So then in Suicide Squad, when we start screaming and running into the ocean, I could not stop laughing. It was so funny. It was so funny. And it's like, you. I feel like you never really get to know what his superpower was. <laughs> He's supposed to be just like a pretty like dead shot, you know, like very like blood sport too. You know, like he's a talented mercenary with a pretty good aim and yada yada. Lots of fun. I love his costume. It was really fun. I love the red jacket. And it's very, this is one of those costumes that's very close to the comic book version of his costume. Yeah, I agree. It's like, they only like, up. I feel like they do like sensible updates. Like, no, he doesn't have like the metal like plates on top, but he does have like a little bit of like red armor. And like, he doesn't have those, I guess they're like sunglasses. He has like 
night vision goggles, <laughs> but very like dead on how he looks in the comic. Yeah. I love how Judiana had to take all these costumes and give it like a realistic but modern touch to all the costumes. But I still feel like each of the costumes is reminiscent of the comic book. Absolutely. Which is a lot of fun. I agree. Another fun one is Captain Boomerang. <laughs> I was excited to see Captain Boomerang return. Same! But also, at the same time, wasn't very sad when he left, though. <laughs> same! I was like, oh, great, I'm so glad you're back. And then I was like, not sad you died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I survived. I was not, you know, crying over it. I do like his costume, though. He has a really cool jacket. He does. I love the little, like, red touches in it. And it's it's much more, like... It seems much more functional than his costume last time. Yeah, it definitely feels functional. Has lots of pockets. Uh, I like the boomerangs on the front of his chest, which is also kind of what his character from the comic book looked like also. So not my favorite character, but one of my favorite costumes. I love that functional jacket. Yeah, he had a great look this time. And then uh, Colonel Rick Flag. He looks like he's just, like, ripped from the comic this time around. I thought that was exciting, because when I was doing the research and looking at his comics, I was like, wow, they really just pulled this costume straight from the comics. It's almost two to T. Literally, he's wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> or, yeah, yellow t-shirt, black holster, pretty sure he's black pants on, too. Like, just one for one. Yeah, I liked Colonel Rick Flag. I thought he was a cool character. I feel sad about... You know, his storyline. I didn't see that coming. I was like, okay, cool. They're all going to make it out. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. Very bloody. I loved how rated R this movie was. You know, it's really nice to see that in a superhero movie. That's what made it fun for me. There were even scenes that made me kind of cringe and want to look away, which that's hard because, you know, I'm a horror geek. So uh, yeah, you really are. <laughs> I, yeah, I was, especially with that shark, I was like, oh, <laughs> I was so excited for Blackguard. <laughs> I'm a big Pete Davidson fan. So when I saw he was casted for this and his character's name, aside from Blackguard, is Dick Hurts. Perfect. I was, when I saw the trailer and that he was in it, I was like, what the f*** are you doing <laughs> I love it, but I don't understand. But then once you see the character, you're like, oh, it's perfect casting. I cannot think of a better like actor to play this character. Uh, yeah, just like a kind of dickish guy that screws everybody over. Perfect. He kind of just plays Pete Davidson. Like, that is Pete Davidson, I feel like. <laughs> I, I guess. Although his costume, I feel like, has the most deviation from the comic yeah definitely it's completely different <laughs> like the comic looks like this weird almost like um samurai like electronic samurai <laughs> <laughs> and it's like i don't think that would have worked <laughs> he has the long purple ponytail which i was watching some behind the scenes and even pete davidson was like yeah i like the costume you know the comic book i was supposed to have a long purple ponytail you know, that didn't work out, which I'm glad it didn't. I I'm, I like what Judiana did. Like, let's just keep it simple. He's just a guy, you know, with lots of guns and ammo. It works out. Yeah, it, it works out. Another person that you never get to realize what's <laughs> what he's good at, aside from shooting. <laughs> I will say the character I was the most sad about who died in the first few minutes was Mongal. Because... I feel like there's so much potential in that character, and she screwed it up. I know. I was like, oh, what's your story? And then it's just, like, murdered. Yeah. I was so excited. She's supposed to be, like, this alien warlord with, like, the long red hair. Her, her uniform slash costume was so cool. I loved it. I was so hyped. And she jumped on that helicopter and squished right into the ground. We watched her burn alive for a few seconds, which was pretty hard to watch. Oh, gosh. That was awful. That was terrible. That was terrible. So pour one out for Mongol because I was I was rooting for you. This was the one I was like, oh, she's got to tear this shit up. It's kind of the opposite. She got her shit torn up. Yeah, kind of the opposite. <laughs> Uh, I do like, she's another one with a really good modernized outfit. Like, the little, like, 
bathing suit type deal she has in the comic. I'm like, not the time and place. Yeah, come on. That's so comic book to like give the female like the super shortcut bathing suit. And yeah, so this makes sense. Like Mongel had like the nice little biker shorts, the armor up top, very functional with the helmet and like decent hair. Not too much. Like it's tied back so she could still kick some ass. So uh, I wish we could maybe we could go back in time and get like a spinoff for just Mongel. Maybe. Uh, you know who I want to spin off for? TDK. <laughs> I knew you were going to like him. I, so I love Nathan Fillion. I know you do. I know you do. And then <laughs> I, a couple days before it came out, I saw that he was in and I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. This is going to be incredible. And then he plays the perfect character. I don't understand how his arms detach, <laughs> but it's perfect. He's the detachable kit. Right? That's what it was, the detachable kit? I think so. <laughs> uh, if you look at his comic book <laughs> costume... He's just slapping people. <laughs> so useless. And looking back at his comic book costume, I mean, he should be thankful because his comic book costume was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I like his like skull and crossbone leather jacket and helmet. Like It's good for the couple minutes before he dies. <laughs> I'm just I mean, like, how did this person even become, like, get in enough trouble to be arrested? Yeah, for slapping people? For, yeah, <laughs> for taking your arms off? That was so sad. Uh, who was even sadder, though? Uh, Javelin was really cool. I liked his costume a lot. I, I love it, too. It's another one where you're like, oh, that's just the comic book character. Yeah, this is ripped straight from the pages of the comic book, which I'm not mad at it. It looked cool. So she just gave it a little bit of a modern twist to it. And that's all he needed to do. That's all. That's all he needed. And I was just like, you seem like such a good guy. How did you end up here? <laughs> As he's giving over his javelin to Harley. <laughs> <laughs> that part was so funny. I was laughing out loud. It like sucks because all of your who we thought were the main characters who just died, but I was still laughing. I was like, this is so chaotic right now, but I love it. I know. I know. Uh, another person we all thought was going to be a main character, then wasn't. <laughs> then it seems like they are going to be a main character at some point in the series. Weasel. <laughs> I loved Weasel. He was so cute. I, mm, Weasel is what I look like when I woke up this morning after the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I I was just like, I was so confused. I was so confused by Weasel. <laughs> I love that Weasel drowned. And they were like, no one checked to see if Weasel could swim. And Viola Davis's character is like, come on, guys, really? <laughs> yeah. I, I loved her interaction with her team, too, behind the scenes. <laughs> so in a comic book, Weasel actually has like a little, you know, vest thing going on. But for the film, they were just like, no. And I actually love it because Weasel has like almost like this kind of dad bod body. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird, but I love it so much. <laughs> I love it, too. And Sean Gunn, who played him, I'm just like... You you can you're perfect at this kind of work. Like Sean Gunn, I first of all, I'm a huge fan of James Gunn and I'm a huge fan of Sean Gunn. I think they're just like the two most perfect brothers ever. Uh Sean Gunn also plays Groot. Uh he plays Craglin and Guardians of the Galaxy also. And Sean Gunn's so good at this motion capture work. He's he reminds me of a lot, you know, he's kind of like our modern day Andy Circus. I feel like, you know, he's kind of moving in that direction where he's just so good at character um, portrayal through animation. Motion capture. That's what I was trying to say. Motion capture. <laughs> I think they're calling it performance capture now, which I like. I like that more. Right? Because it is performance. It's not just motion. Yeah. Yeah. I love that kind of work. You know, him and Andy Serkis, I think they're some of the most talented people on this planet. So talented. And I will never forget his work, though. As Kirk on Gilmore Girls. Such a good character in that show. I've never seen Gilmore Girls. I'm sorry. Not sure you would like it, so that's okay. 
Anyways, Weasel is dead for now, but then we have Harley Quinn, who, you know, returned, and I'm so glad she did. Uh, Harley Quinn, this is such a genius portrayal by Margot Robbie. She's so good at this character. She kills it every single time. That That's one reason I'm glad the first Suicide Squad was made, because we probably would not have her as Harley Quinn if it wasn't for that. For sure. Yeah, I agree 100%. I, you know, and I did not hate the first Suicide Squad. I did like it. It was fun for parts of it, you know? It was, it was a lot of missed potential, I feel like. Totally. But Harley Quinn was the best thing that came out of that one. And, you know, I'm so glad it happened because she was so good at this movie. So obsessed. Yeah. And she looks so good. Judiana for Harley Quinn, she wanted to go back to the red and the black. And she's like, I want it to be, you know, more of a battle outfit because, you know, she's on a mission. She's going into battle. Like, she's like, she doesn't need to be wearing little tiny shorts. Like, that's not helpful. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, Margot Robbie also said to her, I think we've done that look. Let's move on. So she was ready for a more kick-ass Harley Quinn. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love that. It's like, let's stop sexualizing Harley Quinn for a little bit. Like, she's still here to, like take on this entire beach you know yeah yeah she's she's so much fun in this movie um i do love the red and black you know it's very it takes us back to like the original harley quinn that we all know you know of course we ditched like the jester hat which makes sense she would never wear that in public i feel like she wears that at home to sleep yeah even harley quinn has her fashion limits so that's what i love about this adaptation of suicide squad because it's still realistic you know it's some of the heroes they picked have really ridiculous comic book costumes and they just wouldn't wear that so i love this we're gonna talk about harley quinn a lot more throughout this episode another kick-ass but morally ambiguous character in this amanda waller returns (laughs) Uh, viola davis is you know she's a legend she played amanda waller so good not sure how i feel about her she's kind of a jerk she kills this role she's supposed to be a jerk she exploded like at least three of the people on the beach yeah she exploded pete davidson Merle, I think one other person for trying to run away, like <laughs> yeah, you know, that was in the awesome. comics, she's just she's a she's corporate, she's here for business. That's all that matters. I like that they make her more fashionable in the movies because she's not just like a corporate worker for the government. She it's a government role, so she just have to be kind of like a diplomat in certain situations and like play the political game. So. They really make her look the role of someone who's meeting with senators, getting permission to do things from the government, all that. Yeah, definitely. She's very sophisticated and formal in her dress. But then also, I feel like she is still having a little bit more fun with her outfits because I feel like in a sick kind of way, Amanda Waller and her people, I mean, they were placing bets on who was not going to make it, you know? So I feel like they're kind of having a recreational fun time with it. At the same time, she's still trying to be serious, and I think that's reflected in her costumes. I agree. I agree. Um, an- another honorable mention that I want to bring up, uh, it's a character who's in a comic book, but I just thought she was so stunning, was Kaleidoscope, and she's just in the prison scene. You mean Kaleidoscope? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Kaleidoscope? Kaleidoscope? Kaleidoscope. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Kaleidoscope. <laughs> I don't know, okay? <laughs> I don't have one of these say around my house. I don't often say the word Kaleidoscope. <laughs> you, Is that what you called it as a child? I never had one. I don't know. You ruined my honorable mention. <laughs> I thought she looked really cool, and I hope they do something with her in the future. There. That's all I was going to say. I agree, Spencer. She was very cool and very pretty. (laughs) Just like a kaleidoscope. Uh, But the actress who plays her is super cool. She's also an Aquaman, and she's been in The Conjuring. So you might not recognize her, but she's in a lot of films where she does a lot of really crazy makeup. So, uh just want to say that, Elizabeth. I was just confused. <laughs> you were confused. We had the notes up. <laughs> <laughs> you, ca- 
called her kaleidoscope. <laughs> okay, let it go. <laughs> I... Are you trying to kick me while I'm down today? Uh, no. <laughs> Making sure you're not having like a fever. <laughs> Elizabeth, let's talk about Team 2. Team because 2. Because these are the real heroes that actually make it onto the beach, which is nice. They make it onto the beach uncompromised, because uh, they don't have a little traitor in their midst. Yeah. Idris Elba, who plays Bloodsport, I mean, he carried this film. It was so awesome. Yeah. I I didn't really, I didn't realize he was going to be, like, the lead in this film, but he did it so well. You don't think of Idris Elba as, like, a superhero actor, but he killed it. I loved it. His costume was spot on. It, it, I feel like it's kind of like a combination of some of the comic book iterations of him. So it's like, it calls back to the comics, but it's still, like, fresh and new. Yeah, I love his helmet. I think his helmet is so badass. Should I be Bloodsport for Halloween? I think you should be Bloodsport for Halloween. Uh, I was thinking more King Shark, but we'll get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. Uh, speaking of interesting characters, Peacemaker, played by John Cena. Talking about perfect casting, John Cena oh, really impressed me. Oh my gosh. I didn't know what to do do with this character how to think like how to feel about him <laughs> i will kill every man woman child for peace i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> what is happening he's so funny and i love this is one of the i feel like his costume in the comic books was actually cooler which is why i love it because for john cena's peacemaker they almost made him more ridiculous because his personality is ridiculous which i love that and i thought that was perfect costuming they were like i this guy is not as cool as he makes himself out to be we have to bring him down a little bit with his weird funny costume the way he looked i was almost like you were on your way to be like a senator or something but I like you got hit in the head or something and decided to start murdering people for peace instead. <laughs> like, yeah. Cause it's got like a little bit of like that preppiness to it. But then he has this ridiculous chrome helmet, <laughs> which Judiana, she thought she was like, Oh, we'll use this for hero shots. Like, and then we'll have, we'll have something else the rest of the time. The DP and James Gunn were like, no, 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 no. All the time. All the time. This is the one yeah. we're using. He wears this. He wears it as much as possible. Do you want to know why? I want to know why. John Cena loved it so much he wouldn't take it off. <laughs> so he wore it more than he was supposed to. That's so funny because when he was at like the red carpet premieres and even walking around the street, he was still wearing it. It's so funny. <laughs> he, I love him. I like can't wait to see him in more movies because he's not the greatest actor of all time he might be one of the most entertaining actors of all time though <laughs> yeah i was totally convinced i was like he did an amazing job in this role i became a john cena fan and he's getting his own spin-off tv series now about peacemaker really yeah it's, i believe it's gonna be on hbo max i believe that's exciting so i'm gonna watch that i mean he i'm i'm sold he sold it so Speaking of a character that I did not need to be sold on, uh, Nanue, a.k.a. the King Shark. I love this character. Hilarious. He was so cute. He was so cute, despite his, like, horrible murder of people. He's just hungry. He's a hungry boy. He's just, everything is like, num num. <laughs> num num, num num. <laughs> Tries to eat the other people on the team. Oh my gosh. And I love his costume it's just literally this pair of like ripped up <laughs> ripped up you know tropical shorts <laughs> i'm like did you take these off of a surfer you ate like <laughs> they're so big though i don't think he could have but they're so cute on him i loved him so much that was perfect sylvester stallone voicing king shark perfect i mean hilarious the casting in this movie absolutely perfect I I couldn't agree more. It's perfect. It's hilarious. It's heartwarming. <laughs> I love that they made him a great white shark, too. And not like typically in the comic books, he's often a hammerhead shark, which I feel like the great white shark works better because he kind of has like a dull, dumb face to him, which made it 
funnier yeah. and more all the better yeah yeah definitely more believable my favorite was rat catcher mina too i'm obsessed with her she was so cute i loved her i like she was such a good person question mark i mean she has done some terrible things it seems like nothing too bad though eh. they should just steal stuff right yeah, she said armed bank robbery, but the rats did it. So she's like, I didn't necessarily even do it myself. <laughs> well, she was mind controlling the rats, so... Yeah, prove that in court. <laughs> exactly. She is someone who doesn't look anything like her comic book character, though. No, her comic book costume is terrifying. Uh, so I feel I'm like... I'm very uncomfortable with it. Yeah, so I'm happy with what they did with it. Because uh, Daniela Melkor, who was the actress, she brought like a positive light feel to Ratcatcher 2. So I felt like the costume kind of reflected that. Um, it still has kind of the rat catcher mask which is cool but she wasn't all about horror you know she's just positive she loves her rats she was like kind of innocent too like she's not really used to like all this violence not really and i it, her and blood sports relationship was super cute oh so cute and i also loved how she loves to sleep all the time i was like wow i know we are the I same felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> also i loved how she looked like a plague doctor when she had her rat mask on <laughs> right that helmet is so cool Ugh. maybe we should be rat catcher for halloween one of these costumes is gonna be it we're trying to figure out which one it is one of them <laughs> one of them one of my favorite costumes was for the polka dot man because this, this is was so ridiculous <laughs> such a ridiculous character in general and his costume in the comic books was just as ridiculous so i loved you know james gunn said in an interview something to the sort of i'm paraphrasing you know suicide squad is all about ridiculous super villain anti-heroes and he said the one character he said if you can make the polka dot man work then you can make this entire film work and i think they did that because polka dot man worked out i loved him he really worked out, and I like how he just stayed in the back the whole time. Like, he clearly doesn't want to be there. He doesn't even really want to use his powers, but by the end of it, he's like, I'm a superhero! <laughs> oh, so cute. And I, you know, I feel like he was there to, like, if I die, I die. You know? Great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to deal with this interdimensional, virus. What, what was it, virus anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's terrible. I did love his uniform, though. I thought it was so cute. I love the polka dots. It worked out perfectly. And the actor was brilliant. I love him. Did you see his little cat that he adopted from the set? I did. It's so adorable. In the little polka dot vest. Oh, <laughs> so cute. Uh, I believe the costume designer made that. I think she did. Uh, Juliana, you're brilliant. Mm-hmm. Well, with that, we have just walked through the entire cast of Suicide Squad 2. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we're going to actually get into the fun of this movie. Yes! Spencer, are you ready to talk about some Freedom Fighters? <sighs> I'm ready. I hope the Freedom Fighters are ready. Oh, they're dead. Never mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, this was the one part I could not quite handle. <laughs> I love the scene. I just felt bad that they were the good guys, which I didn't know till the end. <laughs> I know! Because I'm like, yeah, get them, get them. I was like, wow, they're taking care of this. Like, this is going to be like, the movie's going to be over soon. And then they were the Freedom Fighters! I love that Peacemaker and Bloodsport were literally competing to, like, see who could get the most cool kills. And I thought something was wrong when I saw, like, the lady, like, she was, like, doing laundry or something. One person was taking a bath. Yeah! And I was like, hmm, this is weird. They don't feel evil. <laughs> when Alice was like, uh, how did you get past my guards? And the Suicide Squad's like, guards? What guards? I didn't see any guards. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? 
Um, but I, th- I felt like the costumes for the Freedom Fighters are really impressive, though. You know, they felt very real. They didn't feel comic booky. I enjoyed them. They felt very, like, thrown together, like, whatever people could, like, grab out of their houses or what they were wearing when they all joined up. Lots of, like, you know, they're in the jungle, so lots of, like, green and browns. It They made a lot of sense. Yeah, definitely made sense. I enjoyed it. You know, there's a lot of military wear in this film, which we haven't really talked about. But we did talk about this when we did Captain America a couple months back. And we said how complicated military wear is. And this is a great example of military wear, especially with, you know, the enemy army that we see on the island as well. It was very impressive. Yeah, they... She did a really good job. And it it makes sense. Like, and it just... It fits the story very well. I agree. Uh, so once we leave the the Freedom Fighter camp, Elizabeth, I learned something through my research and preparation for this episode, and it is now one of my favorite, favorite stories. Let me hear it, Spencer. I want to hear it. Okay, Elizabeth. So one of my favorite stories. We all know that the polka dot man, <laughs> to get himself... He, he has a lot of anger toward his mother because his mother was a scientist. She's the reason why he has this virus. So whenever he's attacking people, he sees his mother and everything. So I, for some reason, came across this article and it was an interview with the actress who plays the polka dot man's mom. Her name is Lynn Ash. And I, I fell in love with her because when you're watching a movie, when a polka dot man looks up and he sees all of the different characters. As his mother. As his mom, but she's in all of their costumes. And I thought, that was weird. And for a second, I was like, is that CGI? No, she had to go and put on all these different costumes. So she said, when I met costume designer Judiana Mikofsky, I was a bit starstruck as she was a costume designer for Harry Potter, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America, Hunger Games. This was my first hint that I was going to be working on a blockbuster film. I walked into the area that they had set up for my fitting and saw more than a dozen different costumes. I had no idea they were all for me. As she said that on an interview with the final boss. So she had to go and actually dress up as all these different characters. But my favorite part of the story is she said when she was auditioning for this role, she basically had to recreate that dance scene that you see in a bar later on, which we're going to talk about soon. Basically, for her audition, all she had to do was dance to that song oh my and all gosh. the different like versions of each of the people in that bar. And I just like, wow, what a great actress. She killed it. I'm in love with her. That's amazing. <laughs> now I want to know what else she's in. I can't believe that. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean... She has such a small role, but she really had to do a lot of like heavy lifting. She had to be Peacemaker. She had to be Ratcatcher. She had to be Rick Flag. She had to be Bloodsport. She had to do it all. And that's brilliant. I love it. Oh, that's so cool. But anyways, we're moving on. We're moving on to the thinker. As you know, I am a huge Doctor Who fan. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? You are? I had no idea. So I, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. So when I saw that it was Peter Capaldi was in this, I was like, oh my gosh, the Doctor, like, this is his second superhero role. Well, he's a super villain, though. But I loved it. I love him. He's a great actor. And he just like, he looks ridiculous, but he plays the role so like straight that it, it works It works out. It's so funny. Yeah, it's very like, you're distracted. You're like, who is this guy? What's all over his head? But the way he plays it, he's like, "Uh, eyes down here. Can't you see that I have like a super villainous plot going on? Like, why are you distracted by my appearance? (laughs) These just help my brain work better. So please carry on. Yeah, I am superior to you. So you can look at my head all you want. But I love that he walks in in like a sweatsuit. It's so typical. Yes. A leisure suit. Yes. (laughs) It's just like, oh, you really don't. You really don't care. (laughs) <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, he plays this character so well. I have never seen Doctor Who, so I have to admit, was not familiar with Peter Capaldi, but he played this role excellent. He's the Doctor! Which one? 
the 13th, I believe. Has it really been that many? Yeah, they're on 14. Anyways, he did an excellent job. (laughs) (laughs) So Harley Quinn survived the beach, thank God, because it would have been terrible. And I love that they find her and instantly they're like, oh, we love Harley Quinn. We're big fans. They give her this most wonderful red dress, stunning, beautiful. And this becomes her costume for the rest of the film. It, they like turn her and she's like, I'm a princess. And she does look like a princess. Like the whole thing with him trying to make her his wife. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> and then he's like, I don't care. I just want to, like, you know, control my country, whatever, whatever. And she's like, I promised myself if I saw a red flag, I would murder him. (laughs) So, you know that when I go to the movies, I end up having to get up and run out like 200 times. You did not. This was the part of the film that I ran up because I was like, oh, they're having a love scene. Like, I saw... They're a crazy sex scene. And I was like, okay, I got to get up and run back. When I came back, he was dead on the floor bleeding. I was like, oh my goodness, what happened here? <laughs> so when I rewatched it again for the <laughs> podcast, I filled in the blanks. Perfect. That was a good scene. I'm sad I missed it the first time. I know. I'm, I love her afterthought of like, I could have just walked away. Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about this dress. It is perfect. It, she does look like a princess. It also feels very regional. It feels like it has that. It feels very to the region. And it looks great on her. I bet you this is going to be one of the most popular Halloween costumes of the year. We're going to see this red dress everywhere soon. Yeah. Yeah. Even I'm considering it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, me too. It looks great. It's so opulent and crazy, but that's like totally the thing that like would catch her attention cuz like clearly she's not living in this world. But also it has a perfect amount of flow to it though, which I bet the costume designer kept in mind knowing that she's going to be uh later destroying Starro the Conqueror in this dress. So a lot of thought went into this dress. It really did and like it's beautiful and then it Even, like, as it's being destroyed, it still looks great on her. Like, that bit of the top, perfect. Chef's kiss. (laughs) Chef's kiss. (laughs) I want to get into some of my favorite scenes, which is when uh, Team 2 goes out on the town. They're coming up with their their disguises. King Shark is, like, fake mustache. And And they're like, you can't come. (laughs) I'm upset. No one thought it was funny. I was like, hey, be nice to King Shark. He's doing his best out here. I guess I don't understand shark humor. (laughs) So let's talk about all their fake disguises as they go out onto the town. I actually love it because it shows a little bit to each of their characters while also still being in disguise. Idris Elba... Just, like, the hat, the, like, sports jacket. He's like, oh, yes, this looks nice and clubby. Like, I feel like everybody grabbed their idea of what club clothes are. (laughs) Like, Peacemaker and his Izod shirt. Yeah, Peacemaker's shirt. I mean, his outfit is ridiculous to me. It makes sense, but feels very, like, East Coast touristy outfit this feels like a typical east coast dad to me he looks like like a harvard student going to a party yeah totally but i love the polka dot man's costume the most his like cool kind of grungy uh punk revolution costume it was so funny yeah the plaid pants yeah i love that i was i actually was like that's a nice outfit on you dude good job yeah and then Ratcatcher, her just little floral dress. I was like, this fits your personality way better. Perfect floral dress. I did love the little cameo of the actress who plays Mantis in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I love that James Gunn brought her back just as the dancer in the background. Uh, all the dancer costumes were pretty cool. I liked them. It felt very real. Like I said, you know, the colors were great. The textures were great. Lots of layering was going on. I loved it. Yeah, that was a good scene. Uh, Here we are again, though. We have to talk about Polka Dot Man's mom. Uh, I just love that she once again had to change into all these dancer costumes and do the dance to the song Can't Sleep, which is what she had to do for her audition. It's so funny to me. I know. I like this. Like, it freaked me out every single time, but it was so brilliant. (laughs) So brilliant. 
it's the song is perfect and i love polka dot man just living his best life for a second it's almost like it's the happiest he's ever been in his life just living free even though he's being surrounded by his mother <laughs> it's so perfect oh my goodness this is an open invitation to lynn ash to be on the art of costume broadcast for us to interview you and talk about this process if you're listening lynn i'm your number one right now please join us <laughs> Please. He'll keep talking about it. (laughs) So the army comes and breaks up this really fun party, though, which I was pretty upset about. Of course, they very quickly get out of the situation in a very brutal scene in their... uh, in the military van. So I think we should take a break. When we come back, we're going to finish out the rest of this very fun, bloody movie. Yes. Yes, we are. Are you ready to talk about Harley Quinn's Great Escape? <laughs> Let's do it. I love this scene so much. Margot Robbie deserves some sort of award for this scene. She does. And like, I love how the team, they find out she's still alive and they're like, oh, we got to go save Harley Quinn. Like, because everybody loves Harley Quinn. And then she's just like, oh, hi, guys. Like, what's up? <laughs> You are coming to save me? I can go back in. (laughs) I love that Harley Quinn's costume does not change. Like, she's hanging up, getting, you know, stunned in this red dress. And she does not change. She's just... Being tortured. Tortured. And she just, like, rips off her dress to make it more functional. And she's like, I could kill all of you in this dress. And one of the most perfect action scenes ever with the dual guns, the colors... The blood. The flowers. Uh, just, I love this scene. I could watch this scene over and over and over. It, it's so, it's great. I love how she, like, puts her hair back into the ponytails. As When she rips the dress off, I'm like, that's an even cuter dress. Asymmetrical. Let's go for it. It, it works. Yeah, it's working. She uses her dress to strangle someone. Which is perfect. Form and function. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, Margot Robbie, I love you. She just kills it. I also love how the gold of the javelin she was given looks with her dress. Just the colors are just so perfect. Everything about this just works. I mean, one of my favorite costumes we've talked about so far. So let's go to Jotunheim, Elizabeth. Uh, this place is scary. I a little bit of a horror elements are brought into this movie at this point. Yeah, the starfish on the faces. I could not. Yeah, so scary when they were walking through the labs and everyone had like the starfish on their face. It was gonna be real alien vibes, and I was I was kind of nervous. I'll admit. Yeah, like that whole situation was making me nervous. When the building falls down, I was nervous. Ugh. The place just really falls apart. I was confused by King Shark and that, like, aquarium full of, like, weird alien fish. Yeah! I didn't understand (laughs) the alien fish. I did love how he was, like, friends. Because they would follow him around. It was so cute. I read in, like, a... It was, like, a tweet or something from James Gunn. Someone was like, what was up with the alien fish? And he, he had a name for them. He's like, oh, those? Like... Yeah, they're just there. Kind of like the idea like, oh, they've discovered other alien species that they're keeping in this building. Doesn't mean they have a huge function to them. They're just, you know, cute alien fish who like to kill you. I don't know. It is what it is. Don't ask questions. It's James Gunn. They're there. (laughs) It is what it is. Exactly. He knows what he's doing, clearly. Yeah, just trust the process, okay? And it worked. It worked. I love the scene where the Polka Dot Man just, you know, they just killed a couple of guys. And Polka Dot Man's like, Milton's dead. And Harley Quinn's like, Milton? We don't have a Milton. <laughs> it's so funny to me. <laughs> Poor Milton. And it's like, but that's, those are the characters where I feel like that's such an audience thing where it's like, oh, this person just died. And you're like, oh, wait, who? Oh, the driver? Driver didn't say anything. Oh, he's dead? Oh, okay. <laughs> And Bloodsport was like, what was Milton going to do? 
<laughs> so funny. <laughs> but and it's funny because it's like because they go back and show them laying the charges and stuff, and Milton was helping them the entire time. <laughs> yeah, he was there from the beginning. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, the comedy writing in this film was brilliant. Also brilliant, Starro the Conqueror. Yeah, let's talk about Starro. I thought they were going to free Starro and he was just going to like out, go back into space or something. Did not expect him to start murdering the whole city. No, Starro's pissed, you know, and he kind of says this when he's di- when he dies. He's like, look, I was minding my business in space, enjoying floating through space. You nasty Americans captured me, brought me back to this place. So I think Starro had some revenge he needed to go about. He was going to wreck this entire place. He's just got to leave some aliens alone sometimes, and Starro is one of them. Yeah, truly. Uh, I loved a comic book uh, adaptation of Starro, if you look. They they did pretty good with bringing to life the comic book. He looked just like it. More realistic than, <laughs> than the comic book one, but yes. As realistic as a giant alien starfish can be. Uh, but these final scenes are so crazy, so fun. I love how they all like go to their special talents to really bring down Starro. King Shark is just, he's going full num num all over the, the starfish. Harley Quinn, she's scaling this building, getting ready to just plunge into his eyeball. Polka Dot Man sees Starro as his mom again, which I bet you the actress had to dress up. And just pretend she's destroying a city, which is perfect. Love to think about that. Rat Catcher brings out all the rats and Bloodsport just kind of has to get through his fear, which is, you know, another great element to this story. Just the idea of just facing your fears and doing what you got to do for the best of, you know, your country. I know. I love how his fear of rats was another thing in like the control room. They were all like, wait, how did we not know he was afraid of rats? (laughs) Yeah, do your due diligence, people. Are you afraid of rats? Are you afraid of sharks? Maybe, are you afraid of polka dots? <laughs> I did love, though, when Amanda Waller was ready to, like, murder all of them for trying to save the city, that her people just, like, mutinied <laughs> to help them. I didn't understand why she was going to kill them all. I'm like, just let them fight the giant starfish. They'll probably die. So I know. Let I it know. happen. It's not like they were calling an Uber to, like, get out of the country, you know? <laughs> She's just mad whenever people don't follow her orders. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Understatement of the year. So they bring down Starro. I love the scene when Harley Quinn plunges the javelin right into the eye. I know. Swims through his eyeball with all the rats. It was, like, disgusting, but also beautiful at the same time. That was, like, a fine line they crossed many times in this movie where it's like, that's gross, but it looks incredible. Yeah, just like visually, the colors, even all the blood sometimes was like, oh, I like the color, though. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of Suicide Squad. We are very happy to learn, though, at the end that Weasel did survive. I guess it she just, just runs off into the forest. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they find Weasel and bring him back for another movie someday, because I wanted to see Weasel's talents. I know. I mean, I just hope he doesn't murder any more children. He probably will. Let's be honest here. And Peacemaker survived, which I was very sad about how he went down. I cannot believe he became like this evil villain at the end. Such a villain. Like, he killed Rick Flagg. Rick Flagg is dead now. He's not coming back. He killed Rick Flagg, and he was seconds away from killing Ratcatcher, too. Which, if he did that, I was ready to get up and walk out of that theater. I was like, you better not. Yeah. No. Mm, such a bad guy. I feel like even James Gunn was like, like killing Ratcatcher 2 would have been too far. But I love that he, you know, DC and Warner Brothers really gave him the freedom to just like do whatever he wanted with these characters. You know, he killed more than half of them. He's, you gotta do what you gotta do. And it worked out in the end. It was a risk well paid off. It, it did. It's, it's beautiful. It's funny. It's, you want to look at it, which, You know, as good as some movies are in terms of, like, their story, they're not always great to look at. Like, you don't want to look at them. It's like you're like, okay, I'm watching this to figure out what happens. You want to look at every second of this. Well, that's it. I love this movie so much. We're at the end of Suicide Squad, and I feel like rewatching it right now, honestly. So, I'll talk to you later. I I agree. 
I agree. I think we should both go do that. <laughs> it's so fun. Well, I enjoyed this. Thank you for sticking with me if as I battle through this weird hangover cold, but powering through and doing it for the pod, you know? You can do it. You can do it, Spencer. <laughs> so, Elizabeth, what are we watching next week? Oh, Spencer. As you know, we're getting into creepy season. So Ooh, spooky season's coming up. I thought we'd start off a little light, a little little gothic romance with Guillermo del Toro's Crimson peak Ooh, i've actually never seen this movie so i'm really excited i love this movie it's beautiful <laughs> it's another one this is one of your favorites it's one of my favorites it's another one you just want to look at you want to look at it i'm super excited thank you for listening i cannot wait to watch crimson peak and i'm really excited to just get into spooky season i need some horror in my life i need some scary movies so i'm i'm ready i'm game me too and we hope you all are as well if you are you know people who are please share us with all your people we can all get into spooky season together we'll see you all next week bye the Art of Costume Blogcast is hosted by Elizabeth Joy Glass and Spencer Williams. Produced by Elizabeth Joy Glass with associate producer Spencer Williams. Our sound design and engineering is done by Daniel White. Follow us on Instagram at the Art of Costume Pod. Or visit the Art of Costume Blogcast.com for all blogcast updates. For more costume reviews, deep dives, and interviews, visit the Art of Costume.com. A blog dedicated to highlighting the best in costume design.